Hello everyone! Now, I'm going to go over the new stuff. Wait, I used a dodge. Was that a stick thing? Anyway, I can bring up my act menu, and I have different choices. The first one I have here is talk. I have a short range projectile, which obscures his vision. Wait, what's that yellow bar over their head? Mercy? Wait, can I spare you? Can I spare you? Oh. You made me so excited. I was like, could I pacifist? What happens if that goes to 100%? Oh, you, you just become a turtle? I see. Alright, so our next one. After this cooldown ends. Let's see. Courage. Lower the damage nearby teammates take. So all the teammates around me, you can see quite a few of them. They take less damage now. Yeah, the menu is slowing me. You are right about that. For my third move, I have flex. Now, my and my teammates' damage go up by 50%. But stick does like 10, 15, so it's not much. My fourth move is flirt where I send a small and fast projectile that stuns Ness for three whole seconds if it hits. It didn't hit. But if it did, Ness would have been stunned for three seconds. Watch this. Now he's stunned and presumably cannot walk or attack. Well, it ended, so now it's not. And our last one is Pose. If Ness is nearby, I can increase ratings by 600% and also pull Sans over. I guess that's important too. But if you care about your ratings, you gotta pose. Dramatic. Now let's move on to the next weapon. Here we go. Now that I'm playing as Papyrus, or yeah, you see, I might not look like Papyrus, but I'm totally Papyrus. No, I'm using the Toy Knife. And I can just swing normally. That's boring. If I press R, I now gain speed and can swing a bit faster. I, I still only do 20 a hit, so... And apparently Papyrus can just leap across the map and blast the ground. I know it says that I do 20 damage, but I only inflict 10 to Papyrus, presumably because he has royal armor or something. So let's go ahead and move on to the next weapon. Here I go. So, first off, let's run up to... Oh. Um. <laughs> I think you deal a little bit of damage there. Or a tail papyrus is scary. I I didn't expect him to hurt so bad. This character also is royal armor. But as you can see, that's our baseline. Now if I activate my counter, I can I can counter if I press R. Boom! And since I countered, I now have a buff, where I attack faster, I think. I, I'm not sure I triggered it. That was my lunge? Oh. Okay. Apparently I have multiple moves. Also... Oh, and it has like an attack menu. We'll play with that later. But um, actually not later. We're gonna wait for that to go again? I think I understand. It's the Undertale attack system. This time around, we're gonna hit Papyrus right dead in the middle. Watch this. Boom. Right in the middle. 200. Where, where did he go? There he is. Okay. Now, let's try our counter. Is it X? If it's X, throw the attack. Okay. X. It's E? Shoot. I must, I must be bad at reading. I thought it said R and X. Okay. Let's try take three. <laughs> this time, I'll press E. Boom. And now that I've countered, look at that. You see that? That is power. I, d I was only dealing 10 a hit, though, because of royal armor. <laughs> I promise this looks more impressive against stronger or sands that don't have royal armor. But I still died since I'm kind of uh, just weak and fragile. Next weapon. My arms are broken. <laughs> what happened to my arms? Oh my gosh, okay. Here we go. What, why would I want to toggle this off? My arms are broken. I'm now scarier 
Then your model. Okay, so if I remember right, it's R and E. <laughs> you better be afraid. So if I press R here, I can lunge. And if I run up, let's see, I can try to kick. Boom, 70. But since they have the royal armor, I only did approximately 28 damage. Wait a second. Doesn't royal armor only half damage? Half of 70 isn't 28. Let's see. That was 29. Yeah, royal armor seems to be reducing it more than half. Or 70 is a lie. I'm not sure which. But anyway... Let's lunge again. Did a little bit of damage, and now if I press E, I can sprint. And I have that sprint meter there. Makes me really fast. <laughs> Gosh, though. Look at this. Look at th this following you. Does this not look like an abomination? <laughs> this is true fear. Alright, let's move on to the next weapon. What, what, what is even happening? I think I'm facing Underworld Papyrus, and I think the minigame happened. I don't, I, I don't even think I pressed anything. I think that happened on its own. I think the minigame happened on its own. I wasn't ready, so you didn't get to see. Oh my gosh. I love how the way this appears. Okay. So let's see. Let's try R first. I'm like dropping death around. And then my E... I, I'm overwhelmed. Let's, let's skip to when the cooldowns end. <laughs> okay, you know what? I feel like this type of weapon needs a tutorial, so let's, let's go ahead and look through. So, let's see. Oh, I, I overcooked it. I need to, oh, I think I need to end it in the middle, I think. I think I tried to cook it for too long. Oh, I just have to aim in the middle, okay. That, that makes sense to my small brain. You know, hats don't have a lot of room for brains. But I can just dump that around, and now, if I cook... Boom. Perfect cooked. That wasn't in the middle. It's okay, I know you play old. You, you can't say that! My audience base plays it too, we can't insult them. Also, I can just hit the enemy with a pan. Anyway, let's move on to the next weapon. Gosh, that looks so cursed. It's high noon, which means my arms are broken. <laughs> Welcome to your last corridor. Oh, yeah? Boom! Oh, wait. Did I do that? Oh my gosh, wait. Boom, boom. This is my sword, so it's advertiser friendly. It looks like it's melee only. <laughs> do that or is a very short range. I, if I roll with R, I can reload my sword. It looks like I can't just click to aim, sadly. And if I throw my lasso, it can run them. Oh, if I run out? I see. So I can go boom. Boom. Yeah, okay, so this is roughly the range. And if I roll, boom. I can use the techniques. Now let's throw that lasso. And now he can't move, so I could just attack him while he's down. Alright, next weapon. So, here we go. I have my spear. Let's see how my spear works. Oh my gosh, I'm not like a crouch. Prepare to die. So, for my R, I can throw a wave. And for my E, I can dash around. Just launching those around. And, with my wave seems to have a lower cooldown. Now, it said you can use these two moves together, so let's give that a shot. We're going to use our charge, and then I can throw my wave around and just do this little kind of swirl of spears. Actually, unironically cool. Okay, now let's move on to the next weapon. For our next weapon, I, I'm, I'm holding a tray, and actually this is, this, this is thumbnail worthy. There we go. So let's see. First off, let's try our R. I can throw my trident, cause a fire zone. 
for my E, I create a wall of fire, which is dangerous. And my left mouse button has a special property. If I just click, it doesn't seem... It looks like my swings are just slow or something. Yeah, my swings take a while, but they hit pretty hard. So if you use this weapon, you want to click before you're ready to hit them. That makes sense. Like if Sans is running away, you probably want to click it and then get close to them. Let me actually see. When, I, when it hits 385, I'm going to use it. It takes oh, about one and a half seconds, it looks like. It takes, looks like 1.5 seconds. So, yeah, be prepared. But if you do hit, it hits hard, and it can set them on fire. Let's use that fire zone on the real quick to see how that works. Looks like the fire doesn't burn them, but the initial hit does hurt them. So, let's go ahead and move on. So here I have the knife that is known for not being fake, because it is the real knife. And now, let's go ahead first. It does 99, right? It does 99 damage. But that's not what's special about this. First, we have the big boom, which in a line causes a big boom. Which, if that hurt the sands, it would have done 250 damage, and to stamina sands, it would do 30 damage. Now, for my R, I can slash the enemy. Those do like 100, I think, but they add up if you keep slashing. So, like, if I keep using my thing, it would hurt. But let's use my Q. So, when I first use my Q, I have a save point. Right, now that's cool. And if I dash the enemy, I can go and load my save. Now, the nice thing about that load is if I get beaten up, I can heal the load. So let's go ahead and show that off. I just need to... So I'm going to go ahead and press Q, and now they're going to hurt me. And now I'm going to dash them, and I load. I'm back to full health, and the KR didn't even stay. I half expected the KR to stay, but thankfully it didn't. So. That's the real knife. It's actually kind of impressive now. You can see the developers are really trying to make the yourself weapons more useful. You know, maybe I'll even acknowledge them in the future and use them. But we can all agree, the Termination's the best soul, right? <laughs> Next weapon. This weapon here makes you the most fresh abomination ever. Don't worry, that's how arms look. Okay, um, hit you, boom. Oh my gosh, you went flying. I'm assuming it doesn't do that to stamina sands, though. Oh, I see, you charge your fr- oh, it does? It does knock them across? Okay. Fantastic. And if I press R, I can I drop a Furby, except I was next to them, so it didn't actually drop. But if I'm away, I can set an explosive. And I can detonate it early if I want. It explodes. And look at how fresh I am. Oh my gosh. I just want to get a team of three Charas. Just start knocking the sands around. Dust Belief, go ahead and try to fight me now. Also, I can use my fresh boost and just hoof across. Let's go ahead and see how far we go if we start right here. Yeah, we made a pretty big distance there. All right, now let's move on to the next weapon. So the axe here has a few properties. It has a little rage speed boost and another thing. If you're, you, it gives you a passive healing item if you keep healing the sands. Let's do that real quick. It has a low swing cooldown, 120 a hit. The healing item only heals four, but it keeps you alive. And if I use my speed boost, it does hurt me like Rage normally does. I can swing faster, but the swings also deal half damage. And also, it looks like they're better at missing. I'm, I'm only hitting Papyrus for one now. That doesn't seem normal. Oh, they, they, they have higher health. But anyway, hitting all those times gives me a bunch of little healing items. The axe is pretty neat. Let's move on to the next thing, shall we? After I speed up, because this is cool. 
gosh, that's cool. Actually, let's thumbnail that. I have another thumbnail candidate. For the next weapon, I can rip my arms off their sockets and they now float. Also, I have a snow ring. But more importantly, I can rip my arms off. Let's show Papyrus what this weapon does. That's right, I can hit Papyrus three times for 20 each. For my first little move, and also I passive toilet paper game here, my first choice, I can press Q. And then after I click, I launch an ice barrage. And I think if I... Yeah, if I move around like that, I can kind of steer it. For my E, I can heal my entire team for eight. Which is neat, I suppose, but if I go ahead and charge up a little bit of toilet paper, I can ice shock. And if I kick the enemy three, about three times with ice, I can make them glow blue, and they no longer gain stamina for the duration. Let's go ahead and charge up our toilet paper. And use eye shock again. Now what's this? What's happening? That's right, they have 1000 health and we just killed him. I'm assuming they can dodge that though. Can they dodge that? Alright, so that, that's impressive, but they can dodge it unless you have like a patience. They're probably going to avoid it. Now for the next weapon. Here we go. Here we have the killer knife. We also have our stability. As you might expect, if I just walk around, I increase my stability. And let's go and show off our moves before that goes up too much. If I use my R there, I can group slash which increases my stability. And it looks like it's just my goop slash. I have my regular swing. Now, once I get enough stability, I become insane, because that's what stability does to you. And now I can goop slash, and this time, it's better. It's a, there's a plus attitude. That's how you know it's good. And once I gain enough, I become even more insane, because I'm that stable. And if I use my goop, boom. It's either more powerful. And if we go ahead and just beat them up and fill up our bar, we can press X and become maximum insane because we are that stable. Because guess what? When I said it was stability, I lied. It's instability. And if I use my goop slash, it's called execute. And I hit the papyrus. Now it might not look like I hurt them, but it actually did 2000 damage apparently. 2,000 is a little bit of a big number. So, real knife is now a real threat. Oh, 2,000 is your max health? Okay, so it barely touched them, though. But still, pretty neato. Let's move on to the next weapon. Chaos Saber is an interesting one. First up, if you use Determination, you don't get a second life. It just doubles your maximum health. You also kind of levitate. So, if we go up. Let's say I swing my weapon. I went from 225 max health to 223. That's right. Swinging costs me max health. Now, let's use our E here. Shocker Breaker. It drops some lightning down. If I run into it, it gives me a speed boost. Interestingly, I'm not seeing a warning. When I was playing a Sans, I saw a warning. This also damages Sans if it hits. And for our second move, we have stars. If these stars hit, they damage sands, but they hit me, I get better jump. And that also buffs my teammates. But you might notice star blazing takes seven maximum health. And so does shocker breaker. So since they take my stats or my health, you have to be very careful to use these. Like sure, they hit pretty hard. I'm sure you can boost your allies, but if you're not careful, you will drain your max health. And if you do get hit directly by, like, red and go to 10 health, you're probably gonna have to not attack. You're actually kind of forced to, like, run away and stall if you don't want to die, please, and you're low. So, uh, if I had any advice when you use these weapons, don't get low. Like, um, don't have a skill issue, basically. If you have a skill issue, these weapons are probably not for you. 
next weapon. Here I have the glitch stick. The glitch stick? Well, it's a little interesting. First, if I remember right, it does a random amount of damage. I think it still does 1 to 404, but that's not the main effect. The main effect is whenever you hit someone, it will show you in the bottom right. Your next attack will trigger a random weapon's ability. Some exceptions. In this case, the next move is going to be Killer Slash, so if we hit them there, we did a Killer Slash. I, I don't see it, but it happened. Now the next one will be Spear Wave, if I can connect. Oh, I have to use it? Alright, I used R, and now the Cleaver appeared and is spinning. I can now use the Burn Pan Cook. Oh, but wait. It goes on cooldown still. If one cooldown's active, it puts all on cooldown. So I actually want to be careful which one I charge. Let's use the burn or the train throw. Burn them alive. Now we'll go through. I wonder if I can get snow grave in here. There's no way. I am maybe you can get eye shock, probably not snow grave. Killer slash. Only heal prayer. That's sad. But that makes sense. Snowgrave's a little powerful. So this weapon has a lot of RNG mechanics, but it's still pretty effective. If you can land your hits, that is. Now let's enter our rage and go ahead and show off Swap Frisk. For the last thing here, I'm playing as Swap Chara. I can hit people normally. I can press Fight. Now that I press Fight, if I run up and hit, Oh, I guess it works a little differently than I expected. Let's try that again. If I hit fight and then switch to my weapon, I can swing it. And then it blasts them. And apparently this predicts. So if Papyrus runs away from me... I said if Papyrus... There you go, I press fight and I swing at them. And you see it predicts them. But that was pretty small, so that's not really a big deal. But, if I charge up my swap meter, I can turn into Frisk. I have a real dagger, and if I land my slashes, I can keep up my meter. I can swap back, I can use Fight, and then it uses a bigger one. And you know how I said that it could, like, predict? Well, in this version, it doesn't just- it doesn't really need to predict. It can just land, and then if it lands... Papyrus would be in a bit of trouble here. So let's go ahead and show that off. Let's use fight and swing. And see, how can they run away? It also hurts a lot. Now if I use my fourth move, you can see I'm now transparent. Now, Papyrus can't see me. You can see me, Papyrus couldn't. Now my fifth move is knife grapple, where I throw a knife into him and just kind of tell him across. I also have Dash Stab, which kind of is self-explanatory, I think. It's, it's a Dash Stab. Finally, if I decide to, I can swap back to my normal form, and I can do vice versa. So, that's actually the last thing I have here, I believe. So, I hope you'll enjoy this weapon showcase. There is a huge amount of weapons changes, and I hope you all enjoy it. See you all next time. Thanks for watching.